I bought this for $79, thinking it was the work of a talented artist. But a robot made it. AI software called Midjourney, created by David Holtz. People are predicting it will wipe out whole industries. Attorneys, realtors, are we gonna be out of a job? Microsoft, as you may have heard, is planning a major announcement today about the future of artificial intelligence. Microsoft announced this week that artificial intelligence will soon allow conversations with its software and search engine Bing. Google raced to announce similar plans. Both tech giants trying to change the internet from a world in which we navigate between web pages to one where interactive discussions with chatbots gives us information. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is a rapidly growing field that is changing the way we live and work. But what exactly is AI, and how does it work? Let's find out. At its core, AI is all about creating machines that can perform tasks that would normally require human intelligence. This includes things like recognizing patterns, making decisions, and solving problems. AI is already a part of our daily lives, from self-driving cars to virtual assistants like Siri or Alexa. It's also being used in industries like healthcare, finance, and even space exploration to make our lives easier and more efficient. In manufacturing and other industries, AI is being used to automate tasks, increase efficiency, and improve quality control. By taking over repetitive and dangerous tasks, AI is helping us create a safer and more efficient work environment. But AI is more than just technology. It's also a field of research and development, with scientists and engineers working to push the boundaries of what's possible. As AI continues to evolve, it has the potential to transform every aspect of our lives. And with investments in AI research and development increasing every year, the future of the AI is looking brighter than ever. So, whether it's improving our daily lives or revolutionizing entire industries, AI is a field that is definitely worth keeping an eye on. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is a rapidly growing field that is changing the way we live and work. But what exactly is AI, and how does it work? Let's find out. At its core, AI is all about creating machines that can perform tasks that would normally require human intelligence. This includes things like recognizing patterns, making decisions, and... In today's video, we're going to be talking about the world of AI and how it is taking over and what this means for the future. There are many different types of AI, so in this video, I'll be covering the ones I think are the most important or interesting. Without wasting any more of your guys' time, I just wanted to say thank you guys for clicking on the video and let's get right into it. If we're going to talk anything about AI, I think I need to discuss what AI actually is and how it was invented. The simple definition for AI is AI is the ability for a computer or robot that uses a computer to be able to do human tasks that require human intelligence. The history of AI can be tracked all the way back to ancient civilizations, where myths, stories, and rumors of AI got brought up. The start of AI research started in 1956 on a campus called Dartmouth College. This is considered by many people to be the founding event of artificial intelligence as a field. In the early 50s, there were a lot of names for the field of thinking machines, also known as machines that have human intelligence. Like cybernetics, which is the science of communications and automatic control systems in both machines and living things. The autonomous theory, which is the study of abstract machines and automata. And finally, complex information processing. In 1955, a person named John McCarthy, who at the time was an assistant professor of mathematics at Dartmouth College came up with the idea to organize a group to clarify and improve on the ideas about thinking machines. In that same year, on September 2nd, 1955, the project was finally proposed by McCarthy, Marvin Minsky, who is an American cognitive scientist, Nathaniel Rochester, who is a computer scientist, and Claude Shannon, who is an American mathematician and is known as the father of information theory. This proposal is what people give credit to introducing the term artificial intelligence. The purpose of the conference is best said in the proposal, and it says, quote, We propose that a two-month, ten-man study of artificial intelligence can be carried out during the summer of 1956 at Dartmouth College in Hanover, New New Hampshire. The study is to proceed on the basis of conjecture that every aspect of learning or any feature of intelligence can be in principle so precisely described that a machine can be made to simulate it. An attempt will be made to find how to make machines use language, form abstractions and concepts, solve kinds of problems now reserved for humans, and improve themselves. We think that a significant advance can be made in one or more of these problems if a carefully selected group of scientists work on it together for a summer. 
The Dartmouth conference had seven original aspects of AI, and they were simulating higher functions of the human brain, programming a computer to use general language, neuron nets, arranging hypothetical neurons in a manner so that they can form concepts, a way to determine and measure problem complexity, self-improvement, abstraction, the ability to have complex topics and abstract them into simpler chunks using sensory and other data, randomness, and creativity. Now that we understand what AI is and where it came from, I think it is time to move on to some different types of AIs that we can see in today's world. I first want to start off with AI art. Now I feel like most of you watching this video have seen AI art before, even if you didn't realize it, and the crazy and scary thing about AI art is how realistic it can be. To understand this AI, we need to figure out how it works and try it out ourselves. AI art is artwork created with the help of artificial intelligence algorithms. This includes machine learning techniques, which can be used to produce abstract images or even replicate styles from famous artists, all with a click of a button. The idea of AI art has been around for a long time, and an early example of that is a mathematician and computer scientist named Frieder Naik. Naik is considered one of the first digital artists, and his work is credited for making a huge advance in the field. Naik first used a computer in 1959 during an internship with IBM. Nake would start to create his first pieces of computer art in 1963 where he would use something called a plotter, which is a machine that could draw very precise lines and shapes. Nake would also go on to win the first prize of the Computer Art Contest of Computers and Automation in 1966. Nake's work at the time was very clever and helped future artists explore the world of art and computers. In the 80s and 90s, AI art entered the mainstream with the widespread use of PCs and development of more advanced computer programs. But AI art didn't become what it truly is now until the 21st century. In January 2021, a company named OpenAI announced something called Dolly, which might sound familiar to the character Wally, -E, and that's because it's named after a Spanish artist named Salvador Dolly -E and Wally. -E. If you've never used one of these AI generators I just named, Named, let me explain how it works. First, you put in a prompt. This prompt is whatever you want the AI to draw and make art of. Now, we need to talk about when you put these prompts in, how does the AI know what to create whatever you asked for? There has to be a way that they have programmed the AI to learn this, right? Well, for the image generator to be able to respond to any prompt you put into it, it needs to find some way of learning. The AI needs something called a data set, which for AI art is hundreds of millions of images from the internet. The higher quality the data set, the easier and better it will be to train the AI. An example of one of these data sets is Lion. You can actually visit their website and see all of their data sets, which is very interesting. When an AI uses these data sets, it needs more information to give you what you want. It needs a lot of these variables to decide what counts as, let's say, a balloon, for example. Let's say you put in a prompt and it says, a blue balloon in space that is shiny. The AI needs to distinguish what a balloon is and the shiny and everything with that prompt. The AI is able to put each word into its own section. So let's say if someone says the word snow, the AI will look at the word and realize that snow, it's white, comes from the sky, can have different shapes and sizes, and will correlate all these words to the word snow. When it comes to generating the image, it matters what data set you have, because if you use three different AI generators and you put the same thing or the same prompt, you won't get the same result because you're using a different data set. Now that I explained how AI art works, I wanted to try out Mid Journey, which I haven't tried out yet. And here's my live reaction to trying it out. All right, so I'm on mid journey. I have no clue what the hell I'm doing. I just got into the Discord server. Getting started. Okay, getting started. This is where we want to go. How to use. Please read. To create images, go to one of the newbie chatbot channels thing. Okay, I whatever. Type slash imagine and then whatever you want. The bot will send you four images in 60 seconds. Click numbered buttons underneath to get up skills. You or okay. Note if you don't see the channels, pre restart. Other. So do slash imagine. One of the newbies. Okay. Slash imagine. Slash imagine. And then we put a prompt. I'm going to do um, a dragon with a top dragon with a top hat on a icy mountain. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. A dragon with a top hat. 
Wait, bro. Dude, this shit's going way too fast. Wait, is that a cat? What the fuck? A chicken playing video. Chicken playing video games. A chicken playing video games with a pet carrot next to him and a cat on the shelf. Okay, I think I think that's pretty solid. Oh, 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 oh. Yo, yo, yo. Wait. You you won. What does that even mean? What did I just do? Yo. Oh, a, a chicken playing video games with a pet carrot next to him and a cat on the shelf. Dude, this definitely did not come out how I wanted it to. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck? Oh, fuck. Dude, that's pretty clean. Wait, what, what do I... What does this mean? Wait, refresh. Is that refresh? Wait, what the hell is it? What are these, like, reactions? Bro, what the fuck? What? Yo, who's this? Slash image. Bud. Did you not fucking read the thing? Here it is. D4 update. Parent. I mean, this one was probably the best. This one was pretty cool. Uh, what is this? Follow? So what? Is this where you just share the art? A transition image for talking about chat GPT. Yeah, this is, I don't know what I was thinking of it. I mean, it's kind of cool. <sighs> As I was researching for this section of the video, I came across a new type of art AI called Gen 1 by Runway. Gen 1 was announced very recently on February 6th, 2023 via a tweet. This AI is unique in that it doesn't create an entirely new video, but it uses whatever video the creator uploads and then modifies it from there. The results of the videos have similar composition as the original, but they have a completely different style. Gen 1 has five different features slash modes that you can mess around with. First mode is stylization, which in this mode you can apply any style of image to a video or you can also use a text prompt. The second mode is called storyboard and I honestly have to say this one is really really cool. In this you can create animations from basically anything so for example on their website they show a couple books to be used to become realistic looking buildings. Third mode is called mask and this is a mode that allows you to isolate subjects in your video and modify them with a simple text prompt. The fourth mode is called render and in this you can take untexturized renders and create them into whatever you want. The final mode is called customization and hence by the name, you can customize the model for cooler results. Gen 1 currently is very new, so you have to sign up to get access to it. Currently, I do not have access to it, so the other day, I went to their website to see what was up. Okay, I'm on Gen 1's website. I just wanted to explore this for the first time and just kind of give you guys my initial thoughts. I thought it'd be kind of funny in the video, so let's see. No lights, no cameras, all action. Realistically and consistently synthesize new videos by applying the composition and style of an image or text prompt to the structure of your source of video. It's like filming something new without filming anything at all. You know what? This AI, actually, I like this AI a lot. Like, this is, this is pretty sick. Bring magic. Yo, what the hell? Bruh. Yo, <laughs> what? I can get, like, textbooks and make them into... A city customize it yo that's creepy bruh no 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 what the fuck now this this is kind of cool i like all this stuff this stuff's cool To wrap up the AI art section, I wanted to give my final thoughts, and I also wanted to give you guys some things to think about. With AI art, we understand how it works, and we have even tried it out ourselves. I think we can all agree that this technology works very well, but does it almost work too well? I want you guys to put yourself in the shoes of an artist who has been doing this for, let's say, 10 plus years. Do you think if you were in that person's shoes, you would like the idea of an AI to create art that for you could take hours or days in a matter of seconds? In a video by Vox, they interview artists and they talk about this. All these artists have different viewpoints, with some of the artists saying that they will still be able to make art, but they will have to grow and change with the technology to fit along with it. Some artists are more mad about this technology, saying that the AI is basically stealing people's work with being able to add someone's name at the end of a prompt and basically creating their art. Some artists said that they could use AI art to help them make a draft of a painting or a drawing or whatever they were doing to make it easier for themselves to complete it. For me, I think that AI art is very cool to mess around with, but I think we need to be able to control it and not have people just use anyone's names and create their type of art when the person may not want that. So, if you were an artist right now, what would you do? Thousands of Australian university students are returning to class this week, but something has changed fundamentally. When they were last here, ChatGPT didn't exist. It's actually very scary. It is 
basically cheating like. The column titled Bing's AI Chat, I Wanna Be Alive, reveals a conversation the writer had using Microsoft's new search engine feature powered by artificial intelligence. I am Assistant, a large language model trained by OpenAI. My purpose is to assist users by generating natural sounding responses to their questions. For the second section of this video, I wanted to talk about AI chatbots. We will be talking about the history of chatbots, and we will be mainly focusing on something called ChatGPT, which if you don't know what that is, we will get into that later in this section. The first ever chatbot, or a computer program designed to interact with people by simulating human conversations, was invented in 1966. It was made at the AI laboratory at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, also known as MIT, by Joseph W. I'm definitely going to mess up that last name, so I'm not going to even try. The name of the chatbot was Eliza. How Eliza would work is a user would input keywords and that would trigger Eliza's pre-programmed outputs to be sent. For example, if you said in your prompt, I have two cats and their names are Churio and Luna, the chatbot would pick up on the word cats and then respond off of that. The problem with Eliza was that it wouldn't understand the context of the conversation it would have and would only be analyzing whatever prompt the user put in. AI chatbots was still in its early stages and proof of this was Eliza could not pass the turning test. Hey guys, it's me from the future and I just wanted to say that when I was actually recording this section, I kept saying turn turning and not turing there's no n so just so you guys know his name is pronounced turing not turning that's just me being dumb and let's get back into the video. The Turning test, originally called the Imitation Game, is named after a man called Alan Turning. The goal of the test is to see if a machine can have such intelligence that you can't tell the computer is a computer and the computer seems like a human. In 1972, a program called Perry was able to pass the Turning test, becoming the first chatbot to ever do so. Perry was said to have more of a personality and had better responses adding emotion into them compared to Eliza. AI chatbots still weren't where they were today, and their moment was stalled off by something called the Winter of AI which went from 1974 to 1980. The winter of AI is where AI funds were heavily reduced. During this period of time, some of the biggest jumps in AI chatbots actually happened. In the early 80s is what people considered the origin of expert system or computational systems that had the ability to replicate humans with special skills and making decisions. These systems were huge for businesses as it allowed them to be able to automate certain processes. Sadly, these systems did not have the support they needed, which did ultimately lead to their downfall. Something was about to happen, and that was something that might sound familiar. It was the second AI winter, which ran from 1987 to 1993. The second winter was able to create a much bigger response from researchers and industries to be able to have more people invest in AI technologies than the first AI winter was able to do. In the 90s, researchers had a new focus for AI, creating something they called Intelligent Agent. This AI would be able to perform lots of tasks which could be translated into things such as web search, online shopping, etc. With all new focus and more development in cybernetics, this made the late 1990s the AI renaissance. As all this was going on, someone named Michael Maldwin came up with the term chatbot, getting inspiration from Joseph W's chatterbot. The word chatbot was used to explain the chatterbot program in something called Tiny Mud. Human players actually preferred to talk to the chatbot than real players, which helped make chatbots more successful. At the end of the 90s, chatbots were seen as something that would stay forever, with chatbots being used in online communication, retail, and business. Chatbots started off as simple bots that would have basic conversations, but now turning into something much bigger. If we go to present day, we can see so many of these chatbots. Bots. But one of these chatbots that has caught my eye, and probably some of yours, is ChatGPT. ChatGPT is a chatbot that is made by OpenAI. ChatGPT was able to pass a million users in just five days, which is very impressive, with it launching on November 30th, 2022. ChatGPT, or Chat Generative Pre-Train Transformer, is not the first go at AI chatbots, with Microsoft having launched something called Tay in 2016, but it ultimately got shut down due to racist comments. Meta tried their own chatbot called Blunderbox 3, but this bot also ultimately didn't work because it was giving out false information. With ChatGPT, OpenAI wanted to make sure that this would not happen, and with their chatbot, they added something called Moderation API. This basically would tell the AI when certain prompts go against their policies, and would have the chatbot not respond to them. Next to ChatGPT in Dolly 2 is something called GPT-3, which is a natural language system and is what allows ChatGPT to create text at amazing speeds. ChatGPT's main goal is to mimic a human conversation, but ChatGPT can do so many other things like write and debug computer programs, compose music, and do a lot more. Now, I wanted to test out ChatGPT and ask it a few questions, so let's go and do that. All right, so we're on ChatGPT currently, and I have a few questions lined up that I want to ask, and if you guys really want to, I could maybe make a follow-up to this video just doing ChatGPT and doing things that you guys, you know, 
want me to ask it so let's get straight into this i want to first ask what is chat gpt let's make sure we spell it right first so i am chat gpt a language model created by OpenAI, which we already talked about i've trained on a vast amount of text data using deep learning techniques to create human-like responses and natural okay we talked about most of this stuff you know this is this is pretty good i feel pretty good about this that is kind of correlating to what chat gpt is saying so the second question is kind of a follow-up it's how does chat gpt work chat gpt works by utilizing a deep learning technique called transferring network which was introduced there's a trigger called attention is all you need by google researchers in 2017. The transformer network is capable of processing large amounts of data and learning the relationships between words and phrases in order to generate coherent responses to natural language inputs. Specifically, ChatGPT has been trained on a vast amount of text data, including books, articles, and web pages, in order to learn patterns and relationships between words and phrases. When a user inputs a question or statement, ChatGPT uses this training to generate a response that is relevant and coherent. This response is based on the context of the input and takes into account the patterns and relationships that is learned in the training data. To generate a response, ChatGPT first tokenizes the input text, converting it into a sequence of numerical values that can be processed by the transformer network. It then passes the sequence through multiple layers of the transformer network, which apply attention mechanisms to learn which parts of the input are most relevant to the response. Finally, the output of the transformer network is decoded back into natural language text, which is the response that ChatGPT provides to the user. The entire process is designed to mimic the way that humans process and generate natural language, making it possible for users to interact with ChatGPT in a way that it feels like they're talking to another person. So I kind of left this out in the video on purpose, like sort of how it works. Like I kind of touched on it, but I just wanted to mainly see what it would say. And I feel like this is pretty good explaining how ChatGPT works. So that's pretty cool. And um, the last question I have for the bot is, is hey, it's just a good youtuber oh wait as an AI language i don't have personal opinions but i can provide you with some generation i i <laughs> Matrix is a YouTube content creator who creates videos about various topics including gaming technology and internet culture. He's amassed over 200,000 subscribers. Yeah, this is definitely this is definitely not me. Uh cough and omit mix a comment humor. Okay. I is I, maybe there's another channel called Hitch I didn't know about. I mean, 200,000, I'll take 200,000, you know? <laughs> Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll do my best to respond. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And don't forget to th hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Whose goofy ass just missed a target? We will never beat this sharpshooter step with your bronze three bitch ass aim. Fuck off, Donald. I didn't say I was fucking ready. I haven't bought PDW ammo yet. Um, Donald, I found your secret chest. How did you get 12 stacks of diamonds? What's up, guys? It's your boy, President Biden, in uh, the last guy you know, you guys. Hey, Biden, you fucking Roblox retard. You hopped on Vanguard. How dumb okay, can you possibly sounds we are all far more aware of the misinformation out there on social media and a variety of platforms, but tonight a new way to spread falsehoods. A research firm has identified realistic appearing newscasts featuring AI-generated newscasters who are disparaging the United States. This worries me because honestly, I feel like you could like have people, you know, confessing to crimes. You could completely frame people. How easy is it to do this kind of thing? Well, actually, it's uh, actually a lot easier than you might think. Welcome to our final and most important section of the video. If you couldn't tell by now, we are going to be talking about deep fakes. This will be the section I go the most in depth in, so I hope you guys are ready because this is about to be crazy. Let's start off how we do it with every other section and go over the definition for deep fake. A deep fake is a video of a person in which their face or body has been digitally altered so that they appear to be someone else, typically used to spread false information. In the 19th century, something called photograph manipulation was invented, and this is where people could alter or modify photos. In 1990, a study was published talking about how experts believe that there was a way to modify video footage of people speaking with different audio tracks, but not till very recently did deepfakes actually become a reality. A company called Metaphysic is an AI generation tool. This company works with an account on TikTok called Deep Tom Cruise, where they show Tom Cruise in different scenarios, but it's just deepfaked. Companies like Respeecher and Eleven Labs allow users to create realistic sounding voices of pretty much anyone, with a huge trend going on recently, with people using Eleven Labs to make Donald Trump and Joe Biden say whatever they want with them usually playing a game like Minecraft or Call of Duty. Deepfakes use something called machine learning. Machine learning is able to learn how to make digital versions of a person's face, and this machine is able to map a person's face and mouth movements so it can copy them. So pretty much if a person's talking, it picks up on how they move their mouth and their facial features so they can copy exactly how they talk. So with deepfakes becoming more and more common in today's society, where can you expect to see them? If we start off with the less dangerous and more funny side of deepfakes, you can see these deepfakes in movies where it will help make actors seem younger than they are. 
An example of this is a commercial with LeBron James. Deepfakes can also be used for actors who have passed away, just like Star Wars has done. One interesting thing to think about is with smartphones being so popular and video recording being so accessible in the future, we could see people deepfaking their loved ones, or as we see right now with the funny TikTok trend of US presidents playing games. Now we need to get into some of the dangers of deepfakes. If deepfakes are getting easier to make and more accessible to the world, what does this mean? Well, the danger of this could be a leader of a powerful nation being deepfaked and then having them say something, if it seems real enough, could cause huge conflict. Fake news has already been a topic that has been talked about, but with deepfakes being able to fake people being in certain places and being able to replicate voices, the future of video and audio evidence won't be 100% real because there's always a chance that it could be faked. And if we think about it, this could help people get away with more crimes with criminals being able to fake evidence for themselves if needed. We've even recently seen a fake Joe Rogan promoting some random product, so people could use deepfakes to make famous people promote their scam. If we're talking about the dangers of deepfakes, I have to bring this up for a little bit, and it's deepfake porn, and this is a real thing, and it's sad to say, but we're even seeing it in today's society with it being a real problem. The point I'm trying to get at is that deepfakes like anything have a lot of good things, but do these pros outweigh the cons? Well, to be honest for me, I don't have the answers, but with deepfake voices being so realistic right now, I think it's just a matter of time until the deepfake faces get to the point of not being able to tell what's real and what's not. To prove my point on how scary and realistic this is, I went on 11 Labs, which is able to make fake voices of people, and let's see how realistic it actually is. So I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to pretty much a deep fake someone's voice. Now, normal people, this probably won't work as well. People like Joe Biden, Donald Trump, Andrew Tate, like people that are very popular and have a lot of like audio clips on them, it is way easier to get them to sound similar. Like if it's just someone you know in real life and you have a couple of clips, I mean, I think it could work pretty well, but I just wanted to show you guys how realistic I can make. So this is Joe Biden, right? It says right up here where my cursor is, Joe Biden, right? Cologne Joe Biden. And all I did for this was I clicked the add voice button right here where my cursor is. It brings you to the screen and pretty much you just, you upload a couple mp3 files or one of the person talking so in this case joe biden and i'll type hi my name is joe biden and i like to eat pizza like why why not that's like some random stuff but let's just see how realistic it sounds hi my name is joe biden and i like to eat pizza like i i think that you honestly could not be able to tell if that's real or not now if there's a video playing it's more obvious obviously but just the audio itself is crazy let's go over and let's click let's click obama so let's say my name is obama and i like to eat pizza let's see how it sounds hi my name is obama and i like to eat pizza yeah you can that one you can definitely tell more but still it, you can tell it's like really close to sounding the exact same i would say joe biden's the best but if you just go on tiktok right now or anything you can search up any ai tiktok like meme thing and it's just you can just see people are getting really really good at this and you know as the future goes and time moves on it's going to get better and better so it's kind of you know it's a scary thing to think about but i just wanted to show you guys this and i hope it uh somehow helped you guys realize how people are actually doing this AI is something we know of, but we need to be aware of how it works. There are many different forms of AI, and with technology only getting better, there is no stop in sight. As we talked about in this video, people's careers could be taken over with AI art and also can be ended with deepfakes. But AI isn't this huge bad thing. AI can definitely help make our lives easier. But one thing I want to ask you guys is have you seen the movie WALL-E? If you have, I want you to think about what happens in the movie and what year does it take place. In the movie, it is set in the year 2805, so very far in the future, and Earth is filled with garbage and humans no longer live there. Humans have turned into these lazy people who are obese and relying on one thing. They all rely on AI robots that do everything for them. If AI takes over everything for us and we have no responsibilities and we no longer have to teach the next generation how to do certain things, we could end up in the same boat. So I want you guys to think about Wally -E and the plot of that movie and think about real life. In the future, if AI does everything for us and we no longer have responsibilities and we no longer have to teach the next generation how to do certain things, could we end up in the same situation? Maybe I'm overthinking it, but I want to know what you guys think. With that being said, that is the world of AI.